Russia's Medvedev. 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 Isn't it a Y? Medvedev. Medvedev. Isn't I it Medvedev? I always thought it was Medvedev. I always said it we, was Medvedev. We are not having a good day with name pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Medvedev. Um, says Moscow's nuclear threats over Ukraine are no bluff. Senior Russian security official Dmitry Medvedev <laughs> said on Friday that Russia was not. I'm going to call him. Uh, I'm going to call him Sparky for the rest of the. <laughs> yeah, Dmitry Sparky. Yeah. Said on Friday that Russia was not bluffing when it spoke of the possibility of using tactical nuclear weapons against Ukraine and warned Moscow's conflict with the West could escalate into all out war. Sparky, deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council and a former Russian president, said Moscow's conflict with the West was developing according to the worst case scenario and that nobody today can rule out the conflict's transition to its final stage. Russia regards all long range weapons used by Ukraine as already being directly controlled by servicemen from NATO countries. This is no military assistance. This is participation in a war against us. And such actions could well become a causus belli. Parentheses, an act that provokes war. See, Reuters knows Americans are uneducated right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had to explain what that was Medvedev whose statements diplomats say give a flavor of what senior people in the Kremlin are thinking said it would be a fatal mistake on the part of the West to think that Russia was not ready to use tactical nuclear weapons against Ukraine he also spoke of the potential to strike unnamed hostile countries with strategic nuclear weapons this is, alas, neither intimidation nor bluffing, said Medvedev. <laughs> um, but that's not all. That's not all, folks. In the more easily pronounceable uh, colleagues uh, bit here, Russia <laughs> warns U.S. against fatal miscalculation in Ukraine. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei, God damn it. Yeah, there you go. Ryabkov, Ryabkov said on Monday the United States could face fatal consequences if it ignored Moscow's warnings not to let Ukraine use weapons provided by Washington to strike targets inside Russia. Quote, I would like to warn American leaders against miscalculations that could have fatal consequences. For unknown reasons, they underestimate the seriousness of the rebuff they may receive, state news agency RIA quoted Ryabkov as saying. He referred to comments last week by President Vladimir Putin, who said NATO countries were playing with fire and risking a deeper global conflict, one of a series of warnings from Moscow about the risk of a serious escalation. Quote, I, I, this is the best part. I urge these figures in the U.S. to spend some of their time, which they apparently spend on some kind of video games, judging <laughs> by the lightness of their approach, on studying what was said in detail by Putin, Rybakov said. Putin had delivered a very significant warning, and it must be taken with the utmost seriousness, he added. Putin said the West would be directly involved in any use of its weapons by Ukraine to strike deep inside Russia because such attacks would require its satellite, intelligence, and military help. Russian news agencies quoted Ryabkov as saying that attempts by Kiev to attack Russian early warning radar systems would be thwarted and Moscow may respond asymmetrically to such steps. A Kiev intelligence source said last week that a Ukrainian drone had targeted a long-range radar deep inside Russia that is part of Russia's early warning system to detect whether it is under nuclear attack. Okay, okay, we're not done with the pants-shitting portion of the show yet. Here you go. Oh! Ukraine claims it hit missile system inside Russian territory using Western weapons. Now, this picture was actually uh, put up on Facebook with a gleeful caption by a Ukrainian politician. 
Ukrainian forces claimed Monday that they had successfully hit a Russian S-300 missile system using Western-supplied weapons inside Russian territory. Quote, it burns beautifully. It's a Russian S-300 on Russian territory. The first days after permission to use Western weapons on enemy territory, Ukrainian government minister Irina Vereshchuk posted on Facebook alongside a picture purporting to show the strike. It is unclear if the weapons used in the strike described were U.S. supplied. So, hey, man, kiss the wife, kiss the kids, kiss the hubby. We're all yeah. going down together. Smoke them if you got them. Yeah, no, I just a uh, really terrifying thing. And, you know, this sort of brings to mind, you know, the fact that NATO expanded far beyond where it promised it would, which is really yep. you trace yep. this whole conflict. One might back call to, it a causes belly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could trace this conflict in, in the modern history. I mean, you could trace this conflict back to 1917, if you ask me. But, uh, you know, in terms of the modern incarnation of it, um, you look at the restraint that Russia had shown for a very long time. They've shown restraint until now. I mean, they keep issuing these threats as if they right. couldn't yep. have just done this yep. six or eight months ago or 10 months ago or a year ago or or in 2014 immediately during the made on right, coup. exactly right even going back to 2014 they could have just done this right the fact that it's gone this far without them having taken that action and i'm not saying i would condone that action i obviously would not condone that action but if we're talking about war right you're talking about gaming out conflict and war uh why wouldn't they have done this already right i mean i think it takes a lot of prudence not to have done this already uh, it takes a great deal of judgment and sobriety not to have done this already. Right. And so right. how far are you going to push it? How far right. are you going to push it? Is this going to be what tips everything? Right. I mean, obviously, Israel Gaza has grabbed a lot of the headlines, as it should, obviously. Um, but at the end of the day, coming down the stretch of a campaign season, is this going to be the thing that blows up? Is this going to be the thing that, you know, Tucker Carlson said, hey, watch out. 2024 has a lot of surprises in store. Could this be the big one coming down the home stretch? Because it might, like, it's it's difficult to see how this momentum reverses itself, um, yep. you know, especially given Biden's posture on this so far. I mean, if he's giving them the green light to go ahead and strike these targets, at that point, are you not pushing it to that place? Right. Because Russia is a rational actor, um, they're not just going to drop a tactical nuke willy nilly, right. um, whatever they might be saying. I think what is more likely is a severe escalation in terms of arms and munitions that they're sending into Ukraine. Um, I would think that would be their first move. Um, whatever restraint they might be showing to take it off. Uh, but Putin's not, he doesn't act out of pride. He, do, he doesn't, he, he, he doesn't do anything knee jerk. He's very, very calculated. This whole thing was calculated. I said from the beginning, if you go back to the first article I wrote about this, that was kind of tongue in cheek, but making some serious points, I said, Putin's overall objective here is to challenge Western hegemony, really. Right. It's it's really right. bricks and de-dollarization. Yep. Um, he's playing he's playing a much bigger game than Ukraine. So is he just gonna wake up and launch a nuke now? I I don't think so. Uh, I think they'll do everything short of that, and we don't know what they might have up their sleeve that that would mean cyber attacks. This kind of I I would think he he do that sooner than this but yeah remove uh, on honestly i keep saying i'm going to china next year i'm not planning on booking it until a couple months out because yeah. i i'm not yeah. confident that a trip like that's necessarily going to be possible by say march 2025 which is around when i'd be doing it please clap <laughs> 